kids will be kids. We heard it from our parents. We've said it as adults. And in this well-worn phrase is an understanding that children are different, physically and psychologically. As a result of their natural cognitive development, children will always seek to discover their world and their place in it. To this end, we see them in perpetual motion and constantly at play. And we understand, having been kids, that this is part of the process of growing up. But there's a problem. Because children are still developing, they see things quite differently than adults. And yet, this child's world, one that's often a mix of fantasy and reality, must coexist with the larger adult world and the dangers it can present. And the greatest danger, and one that's ever present, is traffic. We adults may forget just how complicated the world of traffic can be. It's a never-ending flow of information governed by signs, symbols, rules, and regulations. And the overall complexity has increased over the years, along with the increased flow of traffic. As adults, we make sense of it all and minimize our risk thanks to years of accumulated knowledge and experience. But children, of course, don't have this advantage. And a simple traffic-related message that's clear to adults might not be so clear to children. For example, when kids are shown traffic signs, they sometimes misinterpret their meanings. Even older kids thought they could cross at this advanced school crossing sign because the sign shows kids crossing here instead of at the crosswalk up ahead. A reasonable deduction, but dangerous and a clear indication that children see and understand traffic differently from adults. Perhaps even more dangerous, younger kids, despite our warnings, may literally see vehicles as creatures with eyes and a mouth. These creatures may even seem to be looking at them, and because of this, they may find vehicles less threatening than they should. Obviously, all children need to learn how traffic can represent a danger to them and what they should and shouldn't do. And as adults, parents, and educators, we have an obligation to help protect children by instructing them in safe behavior and by modeling that behavior ourselves. But we also need to remember that children will always behave differently and in many cases unpredictably, despite our educational efforts. So, as adults and drivers, we need to look anew at what we can do to reduce the danger to children. We need to look at the world of traffic through their eyes and learn more about their limitations and motivations if we're to make children safer in traffic. Let's start with the obvious. Children see things differently from adults because they're smaller, and something like a row of parked cars can almost entirely block a child's view of traffic. In fact, parked cars can create one of the greatest dangers. A child may not see the car, and the driver may not see the child, until it's too late. If there's the slightest chance of kids being around, you should have your foot off the accelerator and be ready to brake. And if traffic permits, you should edge away from parked cars to create more response time. Suppose you see a child waiting to cross the street. If you can see her, then she can see you, right? Well, maybe not. We depend all the time on our full field of vision, but a child's field of vision is fully one-third narrower than an adult's it's harder for them to see events in the outer edge of their visual field. Vehicles that we would spot in our peripheral vision simply may not be seen by a child. So don't assume you've been seen. Be ready to break if necessary. Even if you know children see you, there's another problem. Kids haven't fully developed the ability to judge speed and distance, and their reaction time is much slower than that of an adult. If they see a changing shape, such as a dog running toward them, they can reasonably judge the speed of the dog and how far away it is. 
But a car doesn't change shape, and small children can't see the difference between a standing and a moving car. Even older kids find this difficult, so it's harder for them to judge how much time they may have to cross a street. That's why kids may let a slower moving car go past, but jump out in front of a faster car. When you see kids by the side of the road, remember, they see and think differently than adults. We all know how children cover their eyes, believing that then no one will see them. In a similar way, children in traffic make the assumption if they see the car, then the car will see them. The danger, of course, is that you may not see them and throw in the fact that kids think cars can stop as quickly as people and the danger is clear. So again, be prepared for the unexpected. Locating the origin of a sound can sometimes be tricky for adults. For children, it's even harder. Their hearing is acute, but they will often look several times in the wrong direction while trying to find where a sound is coming from. As a driver, that means kids may not respond quickly to your horn. You must be prepared for a delayed response and be ready to brake quickly. As we said earlier, our years of experience help develop a sense of caution. We learn to anticipate problems, such as when we drive defensively. Kids, however, are short on experience. And when it comes to complex traffic movements, they may make decisions without seeing the possible dangers. At this crosswalk, the car in the right lane is stopping. As adults, we would want to see that all traffic is stopping before we proceed. But the child may just assume the motorcycle in the left lane sees him and will stop. As drivers, you need to be especially alert at intersections. Kids may not understand the level of caution needed. Also, anytime you see a vehicle stopped in an adjoining lane, that's a signal for you to proceed with great care. Children tend to concentrate on one thing at a time, like a friend calling to them or something they're playing with. Their attention is less flexible than that of an adult. Here, the ball demands all the attention and any traffic is just not noticed. If you see kids consumed by an activity, they probably won't notice your vehicle. When school lets out, it's time to be especially careful. Kids are focused on getting out and going home. They're in a hurry just like adults. But once moving, children have a hard time breaking off from what they've started. And they often won't stop at a curb and look for vehicles. Their eagerness to be in motion simply exceeds their caution in traffic. Also, extra care should always be observed when driving near elementary schools. Kindergarten and first grade students can be particularly vulnerable, especially when you consider that children don't develop a keen sense of danger until they are between six and eight years of age. Caution flags should also go up whenever you see kids on bikes. Bikes give kids a sense of power and fast movement, but kids tend to overestimate their ability. They're overconfident and will take chances that could create a dangerous situation. And if you see an older child near traffic, a younger child could be close behind. Younger children will often follow the bad example of an older brother or sister and put themselves in danger. Let's quickly look again at the ways you can help keep children in traffic safe. Be especially cautious when driving past parked cars or anything that could block your view or a child's view. Be ready to brake if necessary and give yourself time to respond. Remember that children have a narrower field of vision. They may not see you even if you see them. 
Also remember that kids have not fully developed their ability to judge speed and distance. Be ready for the unexpected. Be aware that children's sense of hearing is still developing. They may not respond to your horn as quickly as you might expect. Be especially cautious when you see kids in or near crosswalks. They may not understand the traffic patterns and potential for danger. If you see kids focused on an activity, they probably don't see you. Be prepared to brake if necessary. And finally, always be careful around schools and watch out for kids on bikes. Children are not small adults. We need to understand they are limited by their age, physical development, and experience in the world. Above all, they just haven't developed the sense of danger that adults possess. And when it comes to the world of traffic, it's difficult for them to understand the meanings and the need for the myriad of rules and regulations. If we are parents, we can help teach them safe practices. When we are pedestrians, we can demonstrate responsible behavior that they can emulate. And as drivers, we can and should always be alert, recognizing situations that could spell danger. If we begin to see traffic through their eyes, then when it comes to children in traffic, we'll be ready to make a difference for safety.